not going to get that championship back by shaking hands, being best friends with the champion. No, I slapped him right in the stupid face. I slid out of the ring, and I let him know my intentions from that point. Uh, he calls me down to the, the ringside, and we're, we're starting to chat. He's just saying how I'm doing all that. I'm just, and then at the very end, he's like, hey, you got a match. I was like, I'm sorry, what? He's like, yeah, you're going to have a match. I was like, that's not normal. Like, why? Why? And he's like, yeah. Um, we're gonna we're, you'll be fine you're, you're gonna do good you're gonna wrestle alistair black it's gonna be it's gonna be great i was like all right cool yeah and now your hosts of the card subject to change podcast for frequency sake tag team champions of the world the wizard cz and never wrong nick Bull. Well, it's the late show. It's the late, late show tonight. I've always wanted to do that. Welcome to the late, late show. This is the card after hours card subject change podcast, the podcast by the fan for the fan. We are, of course, reviewing WrestleMania night one. Just got over with. We still got our tag belt. We're still the tag champs of the network. CZ, how you doing, buddy? I'm feeling pretty good, Nick. I'm feeling pretty good. If you're watching, uh, may see a little bit different background. We are both broadcasting from the High View Lounge today. Yes, we are. And I just want to take a moment to remind you that we are powered by Lopez Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo, and of course now protected by Jared Zoot Country Financial. It's WrestleMania weekend, baby. It's WrestleMania weekend, and off camera right now, we have a special guest. Joe, the show Winkle, he joined us on our panel show the other night. He is joining us here as well. He's off camera, but he is, thank God, on the mic. Joe, how you doing? Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're singing. Let me get it. <clears throat> whoa, whoa. It's WrestleMania <laughs> night one. <laughs> Spare no expense. We're I, thought gonna... that's, I thought that's what you were going to do, honestly. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I had to give a shout out to Doc Hendricks and that uh, big show music, but uh, I wanted to do it with the late show, but... WrestleMania night one, just off, just over with, hot off the presses. Uh, I guess I'll start with our guest, Joe. What are your overall thoughts on the show uh, night one? Well, the moments of the night was doing the drinking challenge during for every chop in the Gunther Sammy Zayn match. It's true. Uh, <laughs> Joe the Show Winkle took a drink. Uh, his drink of choice tonight was uh, some Twist twisted tea. tea. He took a drink every time a chop was laid by either Sammy or Gunther tonight. And for a while, I thought we were going to have to scrape him off the floor. It was hot and heavy air for a while. The action in that match, it, it was, it was something. But no, it was, it was fun. The matches that I thought were matches that I knew going in weren't that didn't intrigue me, didn't intrigue me during the night. But outside of that, at the end of the day, it's pro wrestling and hanging out with your boys. It was a blast to to hang out and watch it. And the the high points on the show were definitely. High worth, high point worthy. Sure, in my opinion. Sure, CZ. Initial thoughts on the show before we start breaking matches down. You know, that's what it's all about. Like Joe said, is just hanging with your boys, watching some wrestling. Uh, if I were to just throw it out there off the top, give it a letter grade. I'm, I'm gonna give it a solid C plus on this one. Not, uh, not my favorite show they've done in the last couple of years, but definitely not a stinker. I had some good moments. I can I can take three matches and and say good things about them and that that makes a decent show to me. Uh, Jordan Rangel with a comment here and I want to ask you guys that before I give you my thoughts. Uh, he says Philly crowd was garbage. I kind of was let down by the crowd it's tonight. Awful. Uh, he, what was up with? I mean, they had the biggest show of the year in their backyard. Usually a hot wrestling crowd. Philly, pretty extreme crowd. Home of ECW. If you don't yeah. know that or not but it just seemed like they were kind of dead tonight. So at the beginning of the night, remember I said they need to turn the crowd mics up. That's what I thought. Yeah. And I know no one else really said anything about it. And I, you know, but, and I wasn't trying to like sound like some sort of, you know, expertise or whatever. I thought at the beginning of the night, it felt like the crowd was in it for like the, because you could hear that they were into Rhea. Rhea and Becky. Yeah. They yeah. were chanting for that match. Yes. And you could hear them when they got loud, they got loud. Like during the, the, the Jimmy and Jay match, which we'll talk about. Sure. Maybe not long, but I, you know, I knew. I, <laughs> but when they were chanting Yeet, uh, 
it was loud. Maybe just because when when forty thousand, fifty, whatever, however many people are there, seventy some thousand, seventy. Yeah, I, what am I doing for underselling it? If when seventy thousand people all chant "eat," it's going to sound loud. But you're throughout the most of the night. I was trying to be nice to think that it was just a crowd mic issue, but yeah, you're right. The Jordan's bang on, and in our text chat, he was saying the same thing. Cz, the crowd just was not into it. No, and Striker, our good friend Striker, agrees with us here. The crowd was just dead. I I don't know. They they woke up during the Gunther and uh, Sammy match. But even during the main event, the start of the main event, they were dead too. I thought they, I thought they were sleeping through most of the show. You know, maybe it was the fifty-two degree weather with a, with the fifteen mile per hour wind and being out in the cold that long. I don't know. Uh, on paper, this mania night one definitely looks better than tomorrow night's mania night two. Um, and, and I'm not poo pooing on the show, but it just it just felt a little lackluster at times. Um, I had a great you know, I had a great time watching it. I'll probably give it a B minus. Um, I really hoped it was going to top last year's WrestleMania night one 39. I don't think it did. I don't 39 night one is is one of my all time favorite uh, nights of mania ever. No, because yeah, because last year night one you have the the Charlotte Rhea match, which was a five star. Like that was, you could argue that's one of the best women's matches, maybe the best women's match in mania history. Yep. And you obviously, the Jimmy and Jay versus KO and Sammy tag match was just so full of Phenomenal. everything. Phenomenal. From start to finish. Ray and Dom was night one last year. Yeah, that was like a fun was little a thing. It was a fun moving parts match. It was great. Was the Gunther? Yeah, that was night, that was night two. two. Still a banger anyways. Yeah, it was Gunther. But, like, but, uh, but no, night one tonight, it had a couple like, of good moments, good matches. But like, and you have, you still had your fun moments. Like we were sitting here laughing at everything during the ladder match. Yes, we were. Uh, yes, we were. Um, and I thought Rhea, Rhea Becky was fun. It was a good match. Uh, and but you know the middle of the show. So if you you have the first two matches with had some energy, and the last two matches had some energy. Um, the middle of the show. Three match lull there in the yeah. middle. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of kill the. G- Hey, poor guys and poor bastards, but the brother versus brother beef match definitely killed the energy. Because even during the night, I was saying, let's, like, let's, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's get that match out of the way. Jimmy Uso versus Jay Uso, brother versus brother, just a third time in Mania history. Uh, you had Owen and Brett at 10. You had uh, Jeff and Matt Hardy. We're not counting Undertaker and Kane, though we did earlier in the night. Uh, how dare you? How dare you right? <laughs> that is not Thank brother you. versus brother. Breaker, I'm sorry. We've got to talk about it. We've got to it talk about it. Card. It's got to be at least brought up. I know sorry, Stryker, Stryker told me at the last SCW Pro show that he was really looking forward to that match, and I think I, I was looking forward to it too. I was buying into it. I thought there'd be I thought there'd be some antics in it, um, but my goodness, what a crash and burn dud of a match. So let bad. Me, let me ask you gentlemen this. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of the matches, were we you look at this card on paper, were we over expectant of this night of WrestleMania? Because you look at the match lineup for tonight versus tomorrow, and this was supposed to be the the hot action, the fast pace, the the in your face night of WrestleMania. Tomorrow is supposed to be the emotional night of WrestleMania because you've got so much build with the Bailey match, Cody, Seth, and Drew. All of those are going to pull on the heartstrings more than this night. But seriously, did we over expect for this for this night of mania? I think we've been so spoiled with how good the product has been. We thought that every match was going to go out there and give it their best possible match. You know, we thought the stars would align. I think we were wishful thinking. Maybe we had expectations too high coming into this as night one definitely looked like the stronger of the two. Uh, over night two, maybe night two comes out and surprises us yeah. tomorrow night. I think it's good. The all Bailey, all the people performing on the night two card have got to be like, this is our chance. This is our chance to go out there and really steal the show and to show night one that we're the better that we were the better night. Yeah, like the Bailey EO match could very well be incredible. Yes. Um, the Logan Paul KO Randy Orton triple threat match has the chance of being just some fun shenanigans. And then the Roman Cody match is going to be a shit show. It's going to be the ultimate book. It's going to be a good shit show. Yes, it will be a good shit show. 
Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, and what you were saying, like we getting together, for, and you know, anytime we get together for any kind of pay per view, really, with you know the two biggest shows in town, you know, anytime you all these pay per views, whether it's you know the ones that WWE has been having, or we, I mean, we, we got together for uh, what was the what was the pay- oh that was Revolution, that was Sting's thing. Yep, like all of them have huge huh? Who? Who? What? Who? Who? Sting? It's oh. Sting. <laughs> all, the, all of these shows that are going on, no matter what, usually these PLEs or these pay-per-views that AEW do, like all of them are usually pretty, pretty banger with all these great matches, and it's all fun. And tonight, it wasn't a bad night. It was just we really did feel like tonight would be the best of the two nights, and maybe that's why. Because I don't think we're trying to come on here and have be negative. No, 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 not at all. No, I mean they we're calling out what we thought was the dud match of the night. Yeah, it wasn't good. It's Jim and Jay, and it was so slow. God, and it had it had the upper like Jordan says on here that match had the opportunity to steal the show. Dud and I know Jordan is a Jay Uso fan, and I, I I know that he wanted that match to be good. I think we all wanted that match to be good. We all didn't come here tonight and be like, man, I can't wait for that match to stink. Not at all. That match was just the dud of the show, and to me was the low point of the show. The crowd was out of it, and it came back to I mean, I, like I remember coming on the show. After SummerSlam, thinking how dumb of an idea that was, how they did it, and it just tonight was like the full circle culmination of yeah, you shouldn't have had the twins beef. You know what I mean? Right. We should we should have never had that. It should have never been a thing. I'm not. I, I can see why they do they did it, and I can see why Jimmy won because it does set up future matches, in my opinion. Jay's got to get his win back. I see that being a trilogy, and maybe they'll improve. But this match just. Felt flat. Well, we've talked enough about that match. Let's talk about the good stuff. They kicked off the night with Rhea and Becky uh, for the women's world heavyweight title. Uh, Rhea gets played to the ring by Motionless and White. I thought it was a great entrance. The live band sounded good. Yes. Rhea singing along to it. Awesome. Shows that she was into it. Got the crowd into it. Uh, I did like the Becky intro, how they took the excerpts from her book and had her narrate it and then even though she did look like uh, the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. Uh, you know, I didn't notice it until she got to the ring. Someone, one of you two was like, she's wearing her book. And I'm like, what? she was. Yeah, she and then was. I look, I'm like, she is wearing her book. Uh, no. So I owe you an apology. I think you, Nick, yeah. uh, you said the other night that you hope that Rhea gets played out to the ring. And I said, God, I hope not. But I forgot that the band that plays her song now is different than the one that she had like uh end of NXT or her NXT run and her first this early is my brutality because yeah. she got played out to the ring uh for the um for the match with Oscar in uh Tampa yep. and it was awful agreed this was cool yeah like the band tonight was awesome yeah I thought they did a really good job the sound everything sounded good uh hats off to the production of oh my God. many of those 4k camera intros they had of becky and Rhea were awesome i'm like guys are we watching a video game it looks so freaking cool and the fact that we've we've mentioned this i'm sure before but the fact that it has more of a real live sports feel than just a sports entertainment feel now uh, i know we can credit certain people who are no longer with the company for that we're not going to name names unless joe wants to had that shit earlier, like, how you said this is this yes. is so much better than Two nights to pen this event. Listen, they like the, them them coming. They go from the kickoff, and they show the crowd. They they come in with the drone shot or whatever it was over the over the over the stadium, and it's Michael Cole talking. And you then show them in, the in, the the guys arriving. You see Cody coming in off his bus. You see Seth. You see the Rock showing up. You see Roman. And then they have their intro package, which was great. They always have that. But then they come out and see yeah, Pyro is sometimes, you know, if there was Pyro, it would have been cool. But they didn't have Pyro. And they had Cole talking about, you know, the night and showing, like, how cold it was. And, uh, you know, then, they're, like, it felt like a sporting event. And that's what I love about it's stuff, you know, it, you know, I love when they when pro wrestling feels like an actual sport. And tonight looked like an actual, like, the production of the night at the beginning looked like a UFC show. Weird. It's almost like the company that owned UFC also owned WWE and they merged. Right, right. I made that joke when I got here. It, it, it was so cool. It was so cool. The production of that. Like, think of all the time, like how many different times they had the walkouts tonight where they followed the, the person through the 
I know they did it with Sammy, but they did it with somebody else too, where they back followed the, him back in the gorilla. Yeah. yeah. So without our favorite buck tooth British guy, since they got rid let's, of him, let's go ahead. Striker already called him out in the comments. Kevin Dunn is no longer with the company. The production work has just elevated that much. So much better. I think like Cole's gotten so much better since Kevin Dunn's been gone. I mean, well, props Michael to Cole. Cole's Outside of yeah, looking like a pilgrim, he did a great job tonight. <laughs> Michael Cole's been better since uh, certain someone has left the company and isn't yelling in his ear right, anymore. Right, right. I'm not going to name that name. You all know who we're talking about. Yeah, we don't we, need to bring his. If name. he said his name, we'd probably have to do some sort of satanic ritual. Yeah, we're not going to. We're not, not going to do that here tonight. <laughs> uh, since Michael Cole has lost that, since they got rid of Kevin Dunn, since he hasn't had to worry about JBL saying Maggle all the time, Michael Cole's legit. Delete. And the commentary trio of him, Graves, and McAfee was exquisite they so they get an a plus for me on the show they did a yeah. great job they carried they carried the first half of the main event they did because how slow it was they did them answering was amazing it was, it was so good it was cole cole disgusted with their love for the bloodline yes. and you know oh i loved it i loved it uh i i think you know becky and Rhea went out there and had the best possible match they could becky rumored to have strep throat 102 degree temperature obviously not feeling her best I think we all were thinking this could possibly top Becky and Char or excuse me, Charlotte and Rhea from last year. Hard to top that. Possibly the greatest women's match of all time. But nonetheless, a pretty good effort from Becky. Rhea looks like a million bucks. The crowd loves her. She's a mega star. Top three star in this brand or in this company. Um, a year long reign now. She won the title last year at Mania and she's kept it for a year. Uh, this reign has not grown stale like other reigns have uh, long reigns. So I don't know what's next for Rhea. But tonight, good for her. She looked great. She looked like a million bucks. She's a megastar. Yes, agreed. Now the question is, is how long is she going to hold on to it? I, I can see. Uh, well, who takes it from her? Who, who can take it from her? At this point? Who, who can legitimately run with her? Let's, let's narrow it down. Who's on Raw right now where she holds the title that can legitimately run with her? I have one name, but I guess, but I guess she's on SmackDown. But I think she'll win the Rumble next year. She hasn't. I don't think she's won it. Has she won it yet? Has Bianca, Bianca won a Rumble? Yes, yes. she won the. Yes, yes. she won, won the one Rumble. in Tampa. She's won the Rumble. I think next. So Rhea. So we didn't get hurt. We were going to get Bianca Charlotte tonight or tomorrow night. That was going to happen this year. We do we get that in the future? The Bianca Charlotte does that happen? WrestleMania match. Do we get that next WrestleMania. I think what you could do is you, you have Bianca win the night. I know Jade had the pin. But I think you could have, and I we said I kind of teased this the other night. I think you have this dominant re run of Rhea, who's probably been their best champion, uh, their best women's champion that they've had in a long time. Because the, the thing is with the women's championships is usually they get bounced around like crazy. And I listen, not every championship reign needs to be this 365 day drawn out spectacle, but sometimes you need it. Yes, yeah. and to assert a dominant champ. Um, like for instance, on the other side of that, I think Seth held the world heavyweight title too long, but that's a different story for a different kind of day. Yeah, I think but for Rhea, minutes tonight is what the graphics for said. Rhea, I think if you want to wait till next year and you have Rhea going into Mania's champ and she loses to like so Rhea went from went coast to coast to win the rumble. Becky should or Bianca, I know she's already won a rumble and she, I think she came out at three, but have her top it and go and go coast to coast to win the rumble. And Becky, who's not or Bianca, who's not lost at Mania versus Rhea. I said it the other night. That could main event night two next year of forty one. Yeah, Bianca Rhea. I like where I like where that would go. So it would be sick. It would be. And I'll call Stryker out again in our comments here. Uh, Bianca and Flair, Jade and Rhea, money. Is Jade is Jade ready in a year? I don't think. Yeah, that's a good in question. A year, if she's is she. Is she ready for to be a champion? I don't know. Could she's, be. In a year, I will say she's ready to be. I think she's ready in the year. They've handled her with kid gloves so far. They've kind of, you know, weaned her in very slowly. She looked impressive at the Rumble. She looked impressive tonight. We'll talk about that match here in a little bit. Um, but Jade is probably the one to dethrone Rhea if you want to look at it. If you're not talking about Bianca. Uh, she looks like a million bucks. She's the total package. Uh, she can cut a promo. God, she's got she's got the physique to look make it look believable to beat Rhea. She's got the size, um, but I think it's going to take another year. It, it, it's not going to happen overnight with uh, with Jade. No, I agree. I think the only thing that I wish the presentation of her would be a little bit better would be is if they had her have a mouthpiece. Jade, yeah, that's a good idea. I think she could carry herself on the mic, but if she did have a mouthpiece, that'd be even better. 
Who would you put with her? That's a great question. I knew you were going to ask me that. And I mean, I'm always the one, don't think of an idea without giving a solution. But right now, I wouldn't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Who's we'll leave that out to our audience. If you want to hit us up on social media, you can hit us at CSTC Podcast on all the socials. Who would be a good mouthpiece for Jade Cargill uh, to help her along in her, pro her program or in her career in the WWE? Uh, like a Paul Heyman character. I'm not saying Paul, but we're looking for a mouthpiece for Jade Cargill. Who could it be? Hit us what up about, on socials and let us know. What about an MVP? Is he still with the company? He's been kind of low-key for a while. I don't know if he's still with the company or not. I know he was uh, at some WrestleMania appearances this weekend, I don't think, with the company, but interacting with WWE stars. I'm not sure if he is or not. Um, just want to let you know you're listening to the Card Subject Change podcast. Card after hours. We're breaking down WrestleMania night one here. We are powered by Lopez Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan and Allison Tattoo, and protected by Jared Zook of Country Financial. Thank you so much for hopping aboard and joining us here on the night one breakdown. We talked about Rhea and Becky. Let's hop into that ladder match. A lot of fun spots here <laughs> as you had six different teams vying for two sets of titles. I love how they had the titles separated. Uh, so there was two def destinations to climb up to. Uh, and that a lot of fun stuff in this match. And that instantly, CZ, told us right at the beginning of the match that the belts were getting split up, which we had a, we were questioning it. And once they showed that the titles were separated like that, we knew, okay, there's two, there's two teams are winning. Yeah, I mean, they, we knew on Monday when Michael Cole said that both both belts had to be retrieved in order to, to win for the match to end. But, uh, yeah, you knew right away when you see the titles hanging on separate rungs. They're split. And, you know, I was I had my picks as to who I wanted to win. Only half of them came through. And that was uh, that was the awesome truth. Kudos to our truth who has always told us He's afraid of height. I'm in that ladder and being scared shitless at the top. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Would I have liked to see like a DIY uh, come away and maybe move over to SmackDown with the blue belt? Sure. However, I'm not upset that Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, a town down under, won the title because. This gives us both a heel team and a face team coming away with title belt. It gives a new life to the tag team division on SmackDown. I'm not upset. I think I don't care. They're doing their job. I was a little let down when they won. I was hoping for like the new catch Republic, maybe to take them back to SmackDown, but this sets up something uh, with a town down under and, and new catch Republic going back to SmackDown. So um, getting that heel team out of the way, we all were here on pins and needles, fingers crossed, that our truth would have his moment, and he did have a couple moments in this match for sure. If you want to go back and watch and we'll talk about him, uh, a hot tag in a ladder match. We saw it at the Royal Rumble, but seeing a hot tag in a ladder match, crowd seemed to eat that up, and it was a pretty fun moment. The crowd went for it again. They cheered. They they counted when he pinned him. That was yes, funny. yes, he went for the pin. <laughs> And then Miz had to explain no truth. You gotta climb the ladder. <laughs> Did he pin Finn Balor in the match? I think he pinned Finn Balor. Oh, <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. There was a moment though, because remember the other night, I th you, you and I, I think it was, we were talking about how uh, either he was gonna grab both belts and he was gonna have his John Cena be his tag partner. But then there was a moment at the end where uh, Damian Priest. Damian Priest were climbing, yeah. and CZ, when CZ comes and goes at an at an off the top rope. It's like Priest and Archer, they're going to each grab a title belt. I was like, that would be so funny. It would have been funny. It would have been really funny if those two, if those two were able to coexist as tag champs. CZ, what did you take away? What did you like? I know you were a little down that DIY didn't win uh, one of the sets of belts. And I understand they, I would have seen one of those. I wish they would have won a set of them and taken it to SmackDown, bolster their tag ranks a little bit, but all in all, a pretty fun ladder match with some pretty high spots that did happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And everybody seemed really safe despite being up on high ladders and looking crazy. I, th I thought it was a really good, uh, really good and safe match for being the cluster that it was. Uh, the only scary moment that I can think of was when that ladder was up under the under the raw titles, and it looked like it was about to bend inward, and they were going to collapse. Yes, the uh, uh, priest smart enough to throw the ladder out of the ring and get a fresh ladder in there. But if that's the scariest moment 
in a high paced ladder match, I, I say kudos. That was that was top three top three matches of the night. Yep. Uh, Striker had uh, that was his match of the night, the ladder match. Uh, he's got a question for us. How long do we think each team will hold these titles going forward? I don't think we're going to see mega long runs out of no. either of these guys. You're not going to see a run like. Sammy and Kevin had. You're not going to see a run like Damian Priest and Finn Balor had, in my opinion. They may hold it for a few months or so, but I don't think they'll hold it to, to match the longevity of the previous two champions. No, and I don't see them. I don't see them hot shotting the titles, but I don't see the them being lengthy reigns either. There's a world that exists where our truth and Miz probably could lose Monda, right? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. To. I have no idea who it'd be to, but it'd be a world where that exists, sure right? Could. Sure, they could lose them right back to the Judgment Day, right? Yeah, that's very true. Could be. Very well, could be. With a with a moment like them, you don't need them to have it forever. No, no, they had the big applause, the big moment at WrestleMania. Our first, first win at WrestleMania. Yes. Yeah. If he, yeah, it, it's not going to hurt him if he if they lose it forty eight hours later. Correct. Correct. And that's that's not why our truth is there. He's. As, as much, much as I hate to say it, as much as I would love for him to somehow come away with the championship when Damian Priest cashes in tomorrow, that'd be hilarious to me. You know, wait, 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 you know something we don't know? You know something no, we don't know? No. You're saying Damian Priest is cashing that's, in tomorrow? That's my prediction. God, so are the Creeds? Uh, are the they're creeds, on Raw. They're on Raw. Are they face or heel? Face. They're face. They're face, they're face right now. Yeah, you can't have a face team take it off them in two days. Who's... Who is the heel team on Raw other than the Judgment? Damn, good point. Because DIY is not heel. No. Awesome Truth isn't heel. Alpha Academy is not heel. They might be. They might be Monday. Maybe. Okay. Maybe turn the Creed's heel. Yeah. Oh no, I'm saying Alpha Academy might be heel on Monday. Could be. <laughs> they very well could be. We're gonna have to boo out it. Gentlemen, let's uh, let's take a quick time out and pay dues to our sponsors. Come right back and. Uh, Catch the rest of this card on the other side of the break, okay? Thanks for staying up with us late. We'll see Football you on the other season side. season may be over, but for frequency's sake, still has you covered for all your sporting needs. Tune in every Sunday when the best professional wrestling podcast around, cards subject to change, gets you caught up on everything inside the ropes. They won't miss a count with weekly analysis and interviews. More into auto racing? We've got a double dose for you on the track. Tune in to Fast Money with Rod Villagomez each week and win some money with the quickest bets in all of sports. Want more insight from Pit Row? Check out the Green, White, and Checkered podcast where they give their insight on everything happening on and off the track. Need your basketball fix? Points in the Pain has you covered with live shows every other week looking at everything in the association. Back by popular demand, we have the return of The Payoff Pitch, FFSQC's baseball show, covering you on news around the MLB. If you're missing football, don't fret. Mark and Dan still have you covered in the football lounge. Missing Joe Winkle? Probably not, but he's still here talking sports on educated ignorance. Football season might be over, but we've still got you covered. For frequency's sake, you know what we mean. For Frequency Sake is brought to you by Durham Remodeling, serving the Quad City area's remodeling and repair needs since 1973. Clint's Draft House, grab a bite and a pint. 7th Street Moline, Low Pies, New York style pizza served up by the slice or pie, Davenport. Lifted Energy, energy drinks, coffee, donuts, and more. Hashtag get lifted. Atomic Sports Cards and Collectibles, Sports Cards and Memorabilia. Vintage clothing, hats, pennants, and more. Ryan Allison Tattoo. Step into the vibrant world of tattoos with Ryan Allison. And a cut above. Offering quality custom woodwork designed specifically around our customers. Welcome back to the show! Welcome back to the show! There you go. You got it. You got it. This is Card After Hours, breaking down WrestleMania Night 1 here on the Podcast by the fan, for the fan. We are powered by Low Pies Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo, and protected by Jared Zook of Country Financial. Thanks so much, Zook. Zook. Thank you for coming aboard and joining us here on the For Frequency Sake Network. We're so glad you're joining us here late at night. We love doing these late night react shows. We need to do more of them. Uh, now we're on to match three, which we get... Rey Mysterio and his new partner of Andrade after Dragon Lee was jumped last night on SmackDown, taking on Dirty Dom and Santos Escobar, which, by the way, I think Santos Escobar 
is money. He needs to have his group called the cartel. He looks yeah. like a legit cartel drug dealing. We need to see him. We need to see him slinging some white on SmackDown. Yes, we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Some so glad, Joe. This is to me where the show kind of went into a lull. Matches three, four, and five. These guys went out there and put on a pretty good match. Um, I think I go back and watch it. I'll probably like it a little better than I did live. Uh, I like all four guys involved, and I thought they went out there and put on a, a, a good match, but it just didn't seem to hold my attention the whole time. Am I am I wrong in saying that? Yeah, I, I agree. The my my takeaway from this match, I'm surprised with how it ended. Ray won last year at Mania. I was expecting that uh, Dom and Santos would come away with the win to Me give uh, give Ray and Dom a one and one with a rubber match, possibly leading to uh, Ray Mysterio retirement in the near, in the future. Just spec speculation on my part, but I was very surprised that uh, that Ray and uh, Andrade walked away with the win on this match for sure. I thought Santos would get a win, like he'd get the pin. That's my that was my initial thought. Um, but I mean, it's not like the end of the world. But uh, yeah, it's just it's like our level of give a fuck kind of died. The first two matches, we care about Rhea. Yep. Not that we don't care about Be Be Becky, but you know we care about Rhea because she's awesome. Everybody loves a good ladder match. Ladder match, yeah. We all cared about wanting to see our truth have his moment. Yeah, our boy Ron, shout out to former NWA champion Ron Killings. Former NWA world champ. That's right, Ron. Where's where's where was Conan tonight to do a rap like three live crew? Oh, wouldn't that have been great? Oh, he yeah. should have wrapped him to the should have wrapped him to the to the yes, ring. He should have. Um <laughs> and the, or and you could have they could have had Road Dog out there too. He's a part of three live crew. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Um, that's my childhood. Yeah, that's my childhood, bro. Um, <laughs> oh, I swear mid two thousands TNA. Um, and like the last two matches, we cared about Gunther and Sammy because Gunther's just goaded, and yes. Sammy, everyone, everyone loves Sammy. We cared about the main event. Yep. The middle, the middle three matches is just our level of like hmm, wasn't there. But this, then this was fine. The 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 move at the at the the move at the end where they had Homeboy jump off the like middle rope, like the little assist. shot it out into the aisle. Yeah, that, was, that was cool. that was cool. I don't like though how he was yelling before it. <laughs> I did not like that. I did not like that. I, did not like that. I mean, listen, this chair is for nitpicking, right? That's right. That's that's why it's there. Uh, we also get Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson uh, doing a run-in with uh, who are those masked men? I know. Oh, we were joking around. Someone said the Good Brothers. I'm like, no, one of them ain't like nine. Like Gallo's like seven feet tall, and, and Machine Gun Carl Anderson like a midget compared to him. Um, I love Machine Gun, but he just looks like he's five five, and Luke Gallows looks like he's right, feet tall right. together. Um, I was wondering who it was. I don't. We we probably said some funny stuff trying to gauge who it was, but then and then after, uh, eventually I was like, oh, I know who it is. But Jason Kelsey like jumped in like over the ropes and stuff. Agile athlete, and he retired. That man retired a month ago. No, athlete. Maybe he's gonna have a future in the in the wrestling business. Maybe. Yeah, a lot of sports ball guys come over from uh, from their sports ball wrestling. Yeah. Sports ball. Well, how sports dare ball. you? <laughs> hey, I am not a sports guy. I, I will always admit that. I'm a wrestling guy. That is I know. sports entertainment. But I challenged CZ like five times to a one-on-one -on -one match game. Not match game tonight. Like on. We're here oh, he ain't going to. He's not going to get up. Not, and, not during Nick's, WrestleMania. Nick's got a, Nick's got a like little concrete patch in the back with a hoop. It's like a legitimate hoop, by the way. Yes, I like grabbed the rim and I was like, Oh, you could I could hang on this as yes, I was doing. I'm mad as shit. And uh I kept saying, CZ, let's go, let's go play one on one. And CZ didn't want the smoke. Just saying. He didn't. We talked about Jay and Jimmy already. Let's go ahead to the next match, the women's six uh six woman tag with the Kabuki Warriors and Dakota Kai, who was channeling demolition tonight with her ring attire, dirty Dakota, taking on uh Bad 2.0 BADD BADD 2.0 of Bianca, Naomi, and Jade Cargill. Um, I prefaced this match earlier tonight by thinking this would be the Jade Cargill uh showcase match, and she looked good here again. She gets the pin. Uh, any takeaways from this match, CZ? Honestly, I think the reason this one was not there for any of us or the crowd is the bill. This happened a week and a half, two weeks ago. Uh, they, they've 
it was a very short build and there wasn't enough time to get invested. I mean, okay, sure, Bianca has had her issues with damage control forever, but Naomi just came back. Jade has been seen very little, and it's just, there wasn't enough time to uh, to get behind her, in my opinion. I think if there had been a little more build, maybe she would have a little bit more. Would have been more. Just fine. Who will they have the balls to put Jade in? Not that Jade can't work. We all watched her in EW. She's fine. She's a little clunky. But she's kind of a specialist. She's still raw as shit. Who do they have the nuts to put her in there in a one-on-one match against first? That's what I'm curious. Trying to think who can work. You know, I think she could go in there and have a decent match with Bailey, but they're both being portrayed as face right now. Correct. Um, I think Bailey could work with just about anybody on the women's roster. Can you imagine how hard hitting of a match it would be with Bianca? But again, they're both face right now. I know. What 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 heel could you throw in there with her? I don't think you can have Bianca because the You're first not match throw her in there with Nia Jax. The first match you have with Jade, she has to win. You can't have her lose, or you can't have Bianca lose to Jade. No. Uh, and again, I am also team. Don't have it. You can't. Don't book a match if you don't. If you can't have people to like we win or lose, but Bianca, I think is. On a different plane where she shouldn't be losing to like the rookie. Um, right. I don't know. So, it's a good question. You give like Oscar, you give her Oscar or something. Oscar, I was thinking Oscar. I there you go. Uh, there you go. So, yeah. The wizard, Gary. Oscar. Oscar, Kari Sane, one of the two, but probably I would I would lean toward Oscar. Oscar, I think Oscar could work with Jade Cargill and it would work. Yeah. Now, and then the next question is going to be will they put her on a card before SummerSlam? Um. Well, you got some overseas shows, and maybe they will. Yeah, that'd be cool. See her in France and back. Last, it's, it, and so that's in May, and I guess we are in April, so it only might cash out. Be so. a few few short weeks away. France backlash show is the next show, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, that'll be fun. God, I I hope they don't call it WrestleMania backlash that they did a few years ago. Uh, oh, they that was cringe worthy. They didn't last year though. They, they didn't last year. It was right? two years ago. I think it was two years ago. Yeah. Thought, yeah. Let's just call it backlash and is what it is. Yeah, backlash has been backlash lately. Uh, if we don't see it. backlash of WrestleMania, you don't need to tag it. The fact that it was WrestleMania right. backlash was so dumb. But whatever. The Royal Rumble before WrestleMania. Uh, yeah, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly what it is. WrestleMania. So Royal Rumble. Rumble. Four months after WrestleMania. <laughs> the second biggest show of the year. Or it'll be like, uh, or like Vengeance. Remember how that was always the show after SummerSlam? Yes. Now it's going to be called SummerSlam Vengeance. SummerSlam Vengeance. I'm fine with that. No, no. Let's Survivor just Survivor Series Armageddon. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> uh, I think we, yeah, Oscar would be a good, a, a good person for Jade Cargill to work with. Sometimes I have good ideas. Um, after the six women match, we get to Joe's Drunken Adventure. Joe's Drunken Adventure, where he took a drink after we skipped it. We talked. We, talked about we already it skipped it. We're not going to revisit it. Now you're trying to reminisce on the times of the yeet. The times of the yeet. No yeet for you. No I'll yeet. Hang my head in shame. No <laughs> yeet. <laughs> uh, up to this point, we get to what I thought was the match of the night. Up to this point, and that is Sammy versus Gunther. They almost assure the Sammy win when you see the pep talk from from his wife and his kid, from Chad Gable, and then the brotherly hug from KO at gorilla position. Uh, we thought we were going to lose Joe during this match. He had to take a drink for every chop administered by either opponent in this match. It's not that I got, it's not that I was getting drunk or hammered or anything. It's just, I had to, after I couldn't keep up. I'm drinking these twisted teas, right? Which, you know, they're, it's sugary as hell and whatnot. And after like the first like 10 chops, I had to burp like them. I've got GERD, bro. I had to burp like crazy. I like, <laughs> I'm like taking deep breaths. I'm like, God, I wish I, I was serious when I asked y'all to burp me, but you guys wouldn't do it. I'm thinking, someone pat my back, please, for five seconds so I, I can let them know. I'm going to take this moment to gush on Gunther. I love him. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I've got a man crush on him. I love his arsenal in the ring. I love what he's become this destructible monster. The crowd was eating up his chops, his power bombs, his drop kicks. I love his offense. It's simple, it's effective. He looks like a million bucks. He's a. He's a beast. He kicked the shit out of Sami Zayn tonight. We all kind of thought Sami was going to win the match, but Sami got his ass kicked tonight. Uh, I love how Sami took him out. I wish. Hooray! 
Brain Buster. Channeling, channeling the long forgotten El Generico with the Brain Buster and the Haluva kick. But Dude. what a great match between these two. Sammy's tough as Teflon, got his ass kicked and walks out, ending this historic reign of Gunther as the longest reigning intercontinental champion of all time, the Ring General. Do you think that he called up uh, his buddy at the, the wherever? The Mexican said. Orphanage? Yeah. He, did he call up his friend from the Orphanage, El Generico, and have him teach him the ways of the Turnbuckle Brain I, Buster? I would say yes. That was sick, dude. It was sick. If you're going to take out a badass beast like Gunther, that's how you do it. It was, yes. yes. Yeah, you got to have it be some sort. Like, uh, there was a moment where I was thinking, oh, maybe he should kick out. But now that we're sitting here talking about it, he took a fucking brain buster on the top rope. And then a hula kick. And yeah, it was good that he did. Now, it was nice to see that one hit. Not that the one. So, the my favorite match of the year and again we talked about who our favorite wrestlers were earlier will osprey is my favorite wrestler sure. he had been for about the last year and a half or so um two years or what or, or i would say but uh the match my favorite match so far this year has been that match with him and Takeshita at revolution yes and they tried to do the brain buster turnbuckle there and it's not that they botched it but Takeshita kind of missed, and he landed on his back. His back nailed the rope, and he had that nasty bruise on his back. Yeah, yeah. It was nice to see this version of it hit. Like it was so clean. It was like, so he, clean. It was so quick. And it was so quick. Ceased. I had no idea that was going to happen. Yeah. Like Takeshita too. Like was sitting on the ropes with his back on the ropes. Like he was sitting on the ropes in the corner, right? And Takeshita lifted him from the front and dropped him. Sammy looked like he was going to do a superplex. And turned in midair to do it. it was so sick and so crisp. That was that was amazing. Yes, it was. Hey, we all talked on Wednesday. We went around the room and asked Sammy the guy to beat him. I don't think a single one of us said yes. I think we all agreed that Gable was the guy, but Sammy went out there and proved it tonight. I don't think though. I don't think though we had a problem with it. We just kind of all acknowledged all that the wrong guy was in the match. Yes. And Stryker in the comments just asked how long of a reign. Uh, are they going to let Sammy have? Let me, let me just say before the match began, Chad Gable says you owe me a favor. Can I get my hot take? Monday night. Monday night. I don't know if they're going to do the match Monday night, but but he is going to go full perk angle on him. He is going to channel the 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 the, the, the juice of his illegitimate dad, and he is going. Remember when Kurt Angle beat the piss out of Eddie Guerrero with his hands cuffed? Yes. Sammy Zayn ain't going to have his hands cuffed. But Chad Gable is going to murder Sammy Zayn in front of everybody on Monday. It could be it could be as quick as Monday night. If I I, I we and talk I about these think, tag belts that could get dropped by Monday night. I, I can see they, the IC belt get dropped Monday night. I don't I don't think they do the match, but I think Gable will be he'll say like Sammy will say here we'll do the match and they'll set it up for probably the backlash show in France. Okay. But then I think like Gable will just like He'll shake hands and then he'll just lose his mind and he will just murder Sami Zayn and in front of God and everyone on Monday night and just be screaming like it could have been Monday morning or something. He, he snaps. Oh, he, oh, he snaps like Perk Angle would have. Yes, exactly. Can, can I just say that seeing a badass heel Chad Gable, I would I would buy into that one hundred percent. They tried to be heel with him and the whole shush thing, but the crowd just started loving it every time he did it. So, so they, they, had, they had to have Alpha Academy be fake. You replace, you replace <laughs> one badass with a mid card badass. You, Gunther's Gunther didn't lose tonight, guys. Oh God, no! Gunther gets elevated to the world title picture now, and I believe he will be a world champion by next year's WrestleMania. If he's not, I'll think of something outlandish to. I'm gonna, hit, my, you, I'm gonna hit you with the choppy choppy. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. There you go. There you go. Uh, Gunther didn't lose tonight. He uh, elevated himself. He looked like a million bucks losing. But maybe Chad Gable's going to be the mid-card badass now, and now that Gunther's on to bigger and better things. Yeah, like to cement the heel turn for Gable, he needs to like call Otis a slob, and he needs to call Maxine like a two-cent whore or something like that. Something <laughs> disgusting on Monday. Just be like, I never liked you. You suck at wrestling, Maxine. Yeah. Oh, let's go eat a McDonald's cheeseburger. That'd be great. What's he going to do to Sazawa? Oh, shit. I don't know. Don't think this. Call him Tajiri. Call him something. Call him something. like, who even are you? So irrelevant. People only know you for that stupid ninja thing. A crowd, crowd loves Sammy winning, singing along afterwards. I think, uh, 
everybody popped it for for the finish there in Philadelphia. The crowd seemed to be into it for that match. Brought them back from their lull. These two, thank Gunther and Sammy for bringing this crowd back yes. uh, for their match and, of course, for the main event of night two, or excuse me, of night one. Seth and Cody, Roman and Rock. I think we all felt the same about this. It started really slow, but it picked up, and the action was hot and heavy after that. Yeah. Can I just, can I just preface this match by saying what I said while we were all get together watching this? Sure. Cody Rhodes looked like a superhero with the most ridiculous sidekick you could find, and their villain was Michael Cole, the Pilgrim. The Pilgrim. We uh, who was who was it that said? Or, uh, they were like, or someone was. It was either us. There was the commentary team that was like, Seth's hat is like on his shoulder, and then someone was like, That's a hat. That's a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Seth found himself some outlandish gear tonight. He really nailed it for WrestleMania. We'll wait to see what he's gonna bust out tomorrow. You know how is he gonna be? That's one thing here. How is he going to be going forth into tomorrow night? Um, that kicks off the show. Is he going to be his jovial self singing along with the crowd, or is he going to be limping out there Probably from, from his game. injuries he sustained in this match tonight? Are you shocked? CZ will ask you first, and then you can answer. Sure. I'm shocked that we got no Drew McIntyre tonight. I know there was no technical ref bump or anything crazy like that, though there were shenanigans. But are you shocked that Drew didn't come out and stick it to him? No, I, okay. I'm not. And here's why. Uh, I had a friend of mine who I'm watching night two with tomorrow text me and say, let's save the overbooking for tomorrow night for night two. Great job, and friend. Have this be these four. And I wholeheartedly agree, and they did it right. They did. There was play. enough shenanigans involved with these four, and of course, with the stuff with the referee. You're right. Tomorrow night's going to be overbooked. Tomorrow night's going to be everything but the kitchen sink in there. And these four went out there. And I thought did an excellent job of telling the story. Uh, the Rock badgering and bullying the referee, uh, threatening to fire him. Yeah. If uh, you keep counting, you're fucking fired. You're fucking fired. <laughs> great. It was so good. He just straight up also kicked Seth in the nuts yes. at one point, and he's making Seth run the ropes while selling the dish. And the ref goes over to Cody and apologizes. <laughs> <I'm so sorry. laughs> I love this match. Um, I think we had high expectations for this match coming in. Maybe it didn't start out the way we wanted it to, but the action picked up, and I thought these four men did an excellent job of telling the story tonight. I, I, I really did. And the crowd seemed to be involved and loved it. And I think they kind of nailed the ending. Yes. They nailed the ending. There were a couple moments, so we kind of all agreed. So going into, honestly, the panel on Wednesday, I had no clue what was going to happen. I thought. Maybe Seth gets the win because he's been looking so dumb lately because of it. Well, you went into this match thinking, why book the match if you can't have anybody win? But again, I've also, I've, you guys know me as the proponent of if you don't, if you feel like you can't have anybody lose, don't make the match. There's nothing wrong with people losing, you know? Right. Um, I, but so I had no problem with someone losing. I was just trying to think of what makes the most sense. And then it was, I think it was Regal who said it, uh, who, who said, uh, you know, Cody loses to Rock, and I'm like, God damn it, why did I not think of that? Because it made so much sense. It does. Because like I said right after that, I said, Cody loses this tonight, and it it almost pretty much guarantees he's winning tomorrow night, which is what we all need and what we all want. But tonight, the finish was perfect. They did the three, they did the callback with the crossroads. Yep. And the third one, instead of Cody taking an hour to walk back to the corner goes, to get goes into the ropes so perfect he, he had hit like roman kind of stood up and forced him back plus the camera angle helped and rocks smacks him with the belt um and then roman spears him and then the rock gets the tag it's the rock it was it was perfect and they showed i don't know if we said it or not but they showed the exact same camera angle of Cody sitting in the ring with his back to the with his back to the people celebrating behind him yep yeah. just at how uh, 39 ended only thing we're missing rubber chicken. was the rubber chicken. <laughs> but, but this is okay. Like I even see people online not worried. Like there's a guy that I follow who talks wrestling and stuff, and he even said, and he's a huge Cody guy. And last year when he lost, he was devastated. But he even said like that was the right finish, and it was the right finish. And I'm mad that I did. It, I'm mad that it took me until we were on the panel on Wednesday to realize that this was the right finish because. Because technically, Cody, the callback was perfect. He was going to win. 
he was going to hit the three crossroads on Roman and win. But Rock was the, but the numbers game was too much. Yep. And I think it's going to tie into it again tomorrow because Cody gains back losing tonight by winning the title and ending the longest reign of our lifetime ever tomorrow night. In a race this last year. Exactly. People are going to people are going to forget how 39 ended. As soon as Cody wins tomorrow night, everybody's they're all going to be happy, and I'm fine with it. Hey, if Cody wins, I'm happy for him. He he deserves it. Yep. If Cody loses, get me some popcorn. I'm here to watch the internet melt because it, it will melt tomorrow night. I will be upset because I will just be like, as a fan, I will be like, it's like you're losing return on your investment. It's like, why? What are we doing here? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what's the point of getting behind these people? And actually having organic baby faces who are so over, even after last year and the way he lost, he it made him look like a doofus last year. And then the whole Brock stuff at times too made him look like a doofus. But for everyone to still be so over for this guy, and we should be like, he's awesome. If they had him lose again, it would just be so bad. But I'm not worried about it at all. I think tonight confirms he's winning tomorrow. There was a couple times. I'm even going to go out here. So if he loses you may as well just get him off the roster yes. because how are people going to buy that and believe him? it again? Why'd you resign him if you wanted, if like, why resign him if you wanted to uh, have him lose it or keep, keep doing this, you know, because at one point, because if say he lost again and then they just had him, which again, not, I don't think any of us think he's losing tomorrow, but like have him lose again. It'd be pointless to be like, what's because then the eventual win will actually be like, well, what's the point? Exactly. If, if that happens, that happens if he loses tomorrow night. When he eventually wins, no one's going to give a shit. Yes. No one's going to give a shit. If he loses tomorrow, you might as well have him carrying the golden shovel to the fucking ring. With him. Yes. WrestleMania 10, underdog wins. Hitman mm -hmm. over Yoko. WrestleMania 20, Benoit under, under, Captain, underdog Captain wins. Captain Redacted yeah, wins. WrestleMania 30, underdog wins. Yes. WrestleMania 40, the underdog's going to win. Yeah, and there were a couple moments tonight that we kind of were talking, like, oh, maybe, a, like, just because we there were moments where we didn't really know where the match was going, even though we had an idea, this was kind of what we expected to happen, right? But there were, there were a couple moments tonight where we were like, I mean, hell, talk about a way to put a guy over would be for Cody to pin The Rock one night and pin Roman the next. But Cody's going to, we all think that Cody, and but this was the right way to do it tonight. The, the last... The last 15, 20 minutes of that match were superb. Yes. You had you had Seth doing crazy shit. Uh, Seth's had, spot uh, where he dives and takes Cody, protects Cody from the spear, and, so Rock, and Roman yeah, so spears Rock. Spears oh, Rock. that was great. Yeah. That was great. You have Rock is a, I love this is why I'm so 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 at I, I was at first again. We talked about it, the evolution. I was so sad that the Rock was back at first because I thought he was sticking his nose in here. But he's so bought into all this. Motherfucker took a bump through the announce table tonight. Yes. yes. Motherfucker is selling like a maniac. Only got a main event, WrestleMania, in four different decades. Yeah, that's nuts. That, that's nuts. That, that, that was wild. And now I think, too, you can do Rock and Cody at SummerSlam. Oh, they sure as hell teased it tonight, did they not? Yeah. With how he did the throat slash, boom, people's elbow, one, two, three. He can hold it. Let's say Cody wins tomorrow night. Rock and tell Roman, hey, I beat him, but you couldn't. You yeah, know. we said that earlier. Like, Rock, Rock, Rock can be like, hey, I beat him, but you couldn't. And I don't remember if we said it on the panel show. I know we've said it in passing outside off the air. But you don't talk about bloodline rules for two months and not have the fucking match. Yes. You don't, have, you don't talk about it and not show right. bloodline rules. Yeah, one of y'all said basically it's like I think uh, Rod, uh, Rod said it. But you don't show the gun if you're not going to use the gun. Exactly. Right. Right again, I can't believe I'd ever put the two and two together on that one, but yeah, man, like it was the way that the match was great, the, the, the ending of it, it was slow at first, but it is what it is, and the finish was fun. And tomorrow night, it's gonna be, I think, we're gonna be pleasantly surprised tomorrow night. I think tomorrow night's card is gonna overperform. I'm gonna say that right now. I think there's gonna be there's going to be some moments, I think there's not, I think there's gonna be some matches that are gonna overperform than what they should. Go around the room here. What do you think? What match is going to steal the show tomorrow night? You can't talk. Can't say the main event. Can't, can't say main event. Say I'll main say uh, Bailey and EO. Okay. I think that match will bang. I think EO is exactly awesome. what I was going to say, but just uh, for difference's sake, I think we're going to see a hell of a match in that triple threat. Logan Paul, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens. Do you think there's any chance Logan loses? No. No? Okay. No. I don't either, but. Prime sponsor. Yeah, I know. 
the prime I mean, replenishing station that got taken out a couple times tonight. I'm going to go with Styles and uh, LA Knight. They they started a little tussle at the uh, WWE World yesterday. And he, hey, tell me the last bad AJ Styles match you saw. Can't think of it. You can't think of it. And LA Knight's going to go out there his first Mania. He wants to you know make a name for himself. Uh, become a bigger star than he already is. I, that's what I think. But I, I think tomorrow night is going to pleasantly surprise us top to bottom. Um, I agree. And, and, and pick up the slack where one, where one you know, laid it down. Yeah, and I, yeah. it's not that tonight was awful. It's no, just there no, were, tonight was fun. Tonight was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was there, fun. There and... wasn't really a moment tonight where you would look at the people who come after the match and those people are saying, I have to call it that. There, there really didn't happen. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Right. Yes. Right. Because you knew after that Sammy brainbuster Haluva kick spot, you were still going to get something big in the main event between yeah. Rock and Roll Man, Cody and Seth. Yeah, it's like its own world almost. Those the 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 main event stuff with the Cody and Roman and Rock stuff. It feels like it's in its own universe. Yeah. But yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Tomorrow, I really do think that that I think the the Seth Drew match could be a little disappointing because they might try to tie too much of the knee injury which I, they have to obviously but it might be a little bit weird with punk out there i don't know i'm worried that that might be a little bit too quote unquote overbooky for that for what it needs to be but outside of that i think tomorrow should be i'm not thinking i'm not like thinking that the match is going to suck or anything but i do think there's going to be there's probably a better chance of tomorrow shocking us in the value of it compared to if that makes sense, like than what we originally felt. So I'm excited. It'll be fun. And if, and yeah, the end of the night that that match is gonna be it's going to be wild. That'll be a fun drinking game. Take a drink for every time someone runs in or finish your drink for every surprise old head to come back. Yes. Shot on a bottle of Everclear when Stone Cold shows up. Oh and I think tomorrow is gonna be one of those nights where you're just gonna have to find a hot you're going to see that mentality of, oh, my God, I have guys. And then they go out. It's just going to bring the best out of every single person. You're starting with Seth and Drew. Do we see a Damien Nash in? God, I think now's the time to do it. He's hurt. Yeah, because, again, you could have Drew just win it off of him like in a month. Or a clash at the castle. We're booking the we're, when is that show? I'm Clash curious. The castles in June. Oh, okay. There you go. You could man, we're booking the hell out of Monday night. Because I was gonna say you could have Drew beat the brakes off Damien on that Monday too. So maybe maybe there's just a maybe I should just book Monday night off to Raw, honestly. That's fine. But, That's fine. Uh no, like I Drew the Damien Cash would be cool because again, if Drew like we're running out of time. Because Drew's not going to probably hold it forever, but it's going to go from unless they go from like if Punk is, if it's in May and Punk is ready for May, if Punk is somehow able to be back in five months, what? The, uh, what if Punk costs Drew the match via during the cash in? Oh, like Damian cashes in and Punk like knocks Drew out and then Damian beats Seth. Seth yes. That's a good. That, that's a good, I like that. I never thought of that. And you, then you got you, we already because you got that feud when Punk gets back. It's going to be Punk and Drew, and then when you Punk can gets have, back. And then you can have Drew be pissed and beat Priest for the title, and then when Punk comes back, oh. you have Punk and Drew. And and here's the thing: I think I think Drew is going to end up with the title one way or another very soon, whether it's tomorrow night, absolutely, or in the next few weeks or, or the next month. Yep. I think how long Drew holds the title is going to depend on how the crowd reacts. Because you got to remember, the last time he held the World Championship was during the COVID era. era was and he was face. And he was face. And he was face. Yep. Over, like, so over. there was no crowd. In There was no crowd in the building to support him. He was over, and it worked, and he carried the pandemic era of wrestling in the WWE. But he entered 37 – or excuse me, he entered 37 as champion and yeah. dropped it to Lashley in the opening match. No, he was challenger because remember, uh, Miz beat him with the briefcase. That's right. And yeah. then Lashley That's beat the right. brakes off That's Miz. Right. My bad. And then Good and so he has never open. been a champion in front of a crowd. So yeah. this would kind of be his his comeuppance, his reward for being the champ during COVID. Fully and understanding. He he's on the hottest run of his career right now. As as a he's a pretty good he's a pretty good heel. At least he he plays up the dickhead. 
that can kick. And you your know ass. he's gonna be. And you know he's gonna be taunting Punk when Punk's at ringside tomorrow. So God, you think he comes out in a CM Punk shirt? It'd be good. It'd be good. It'd be cool it would did. be really cool. It would be really cool. Uh, I I just think tomorrow night. I mean, God, I, I can't believe I'm gonna say this because I it could really fall flat on my face. But I think like the final testament and the pride could go out there and have a banger of a match. I really could like the, the is it a no is it like I a street fight type of street fight? I it could be a little right plunder match. That's when I'm planning on going to the back. Oh, that's your piss break match, huh? Is that your piss break match tomorrow night? The the pride versus uh the, the final testament. Yes, I don't, yeah. If I had to pick one, it'd be that yeah, one. Yeah, probably mine too. But I have a feeling. I mean, these got. I don't know. I just have a feeling tomorrow night's gonna be special. I'm like, they're gonna. Each match is gonna top the next one. The, someone needs to challenge the crowd. Someone needs to go on. Someone during this press conference needs to say, "Ayo, Philly crowd." Y'all suck ass. Or maybe The Rock said it. Like, the crowd, the millions, y'all were bitches tonight. Y'all need to be better. And then tomorrow night, they're out there, like, at their booing Santa-ist most. Yes, I was expecting a more rowdy Philly crowd. I guess I was, maybe that's why I was let down about this show. I I, I love this show, don't get me wrong. I had a great time watching it. I I love the main event. I love Sammy and Gunther. Love the ladder match. Thought the opener was solid. The crowd was not what they should have been. And being in Philly, being in the backyard of ECW, and those fans of ECW being just absolutely rabid back in the day, you would expect a better crowd yes. in Philly. Yes, I agree. And maybe they'll prove us wrong tomorrow. Hopefully they will. Hope. Hopefully they will show up tomorrow and be that much better. But this crowd. Well, we're not dead. We hope you're not dead. Uh, thank you for sticking with us here on Card After Hours. We want to thank our special guest, Joe the Show Winkle from the Educated Ignorance Podcast, for sticking around yeah, this is, and with us tonight. Had a lot of fun. This is awesome, man. The, like doing these in person. I it's uh, I mean, I haven't been able to have one where I'm in person with someone to do these for a while, and it's, it's always better to have. It's your, you know, it's a lot more free flowing. It's more fun. You get to make more jokes and be, you know, talk more shit about stuff. But no, this was a blast and. Tomorrow should be fun as well. God love professional wrestling. God, I love it. It's great. It's great. And I'm not, I'm not poo pooing on any of our other shows, Nick. But the panel show Wednesday, the show now being face to face, yep, just has been really fun. But, you know, and that's not to take away of any. We've had some really good episodes in our hundred. Had a lot of fun doing this podcast, but these last couple shows have been real fun. The panel, I do want to say too, not you know, as a not an outsider, but just from like what you guys talked about on wednesday um we you know the three of us have our own little group chat and stuff and you mentioned it panel was fun that was awesome the all of us giving our stuff and whatnot and you know being a part of the network here you what you guys do is is great and the stuff that you guys take part in and it's so much fun man you know to to do to do all this and i've loved the the friendship that we've kind of all had i mean we knew each other before and then the way we've kind of ran into yeah. each other is fun and stuff so Oh man, this was a blast, and uh, the this show was fun. I'm glad I, I'm glad I got to stay after and hang out with you all and and be a part of it. And uh, well, we need you to sober up before you went home. I was fine. <laughs> if anything, I was. And I wish we should have had a cam on you during that match, man. You were having a. I was. I was. Having, I, that's literally the thing. I had to you burp were, like you crazy. Did, you did. You like, halfway through the match, like because of all the chops that Sammy was hitting, I like felt like I, I just had this huge blurb of like air from my throat to my stomach <laughs> oh my you felt like you got chopped yourself well. i'm so uncomfortable right now you were also to... very animated because your your arm flailed over to nick i, I, I lost count of how many times yeah. <laughs> yes i was it was fun and uh yeah that was that was a blast if anything because it was twisted tease it's not more I me mean, being drunk it was probably more be, being like an eight-year-old you know after i drank two sodas at dinner or something so i was just up like i was punch drunk not actual drunk just bouncing off the walls <laughs> gonna end on this note here striker said it best striker thanks for sticking up with us card after hours late night it's the late show professional wrestling is family it really is yeah, yeah absolutely it really is and i feel sorry for all the people out there that that don't uh they don't see it the way we do. They don't embrace professional wrestling we do because it is. It's one big family. Tribalism sucks. Tribalism sucks, man. Love it all. Love it all. I really do. Oh, yeah, man. That's especially what this weekend's about. Yeah. Especially yes. what this weekend's about. Yep. You have 
Yeah, there's good shows and there's bad shows. And I know you were saying there was a show you were watching the other night that was a fumble like ROH last night. Like Mark freaking Briscoe won the ROH title. Yeah, props to Mark Briscoe winning oh, it 11 right. years to the day after his brother first won the ROH title. Like, How cool, cool is that? Shit. Awesome. We have all these cool moments on this weekend especially, but just wrestling in general, man. It's just, yes. Yeah, it's just, it's so, it's so much fun. And people are way too serious about stuff and wrestling's just a great like way to escape from life sometimes and i will say this and i will close this out support indie wrestling support indie wrestlers support your family in the wrestling world support wrestling podcast hashtag all of them uh i'm gonna close things out for us for joe the show Winkle, our special guest yes, sir. my tag team partner as always no no no, no never wrong nick bull I am the Wizard CZ. We will be back with one more WrestleMania show on Tuesday. We'll be joined by Brandon the Shank Eubanks. That's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. And then we'll get to, we'll kick off April, uh, the rest of April here, talk about that next Tuesday. But you guys have a great rest of your WrestleMania weekend. Enjoy night two. Enjoy the Monday after Mania because these are going to be wild, and I expect things are going to get blown out of the water in the next 48 hours. We'll, we'll see you Tuesday at 7. Have, have a good rest of